Hello everybody, how's it going? Welcome to a brand new Game Maker tutorial. Uh, this is a two-parter series thing. We're going to be making this cool room transition for RPGs. It's basically a way to divide your world up into individual rooms uh, that is inspired by Zelda. I know in my last live stream people were asking if I could do Zelda type stuff. So this is a cool little one. So in this episode we're going to be uh, doing the actual like moving between rooms and the next episode we're going to be adding a cool little fade effect, a fade transition uh, to give it a bit more atmosphere as we move between rooms. Uh, so kind of a cool little thing, shouldn't take us too long. Uh, I'm going to break down how we do it here. I'll show you what I'm starting with. All I've got, I've got one room and I've got a player and some rocks. I'm just going to run it here and we'll see this. So you can see I've got like my little knight, he can walk around. I've got these rocks to show that this is one room. But if he goes up, he doesn't go anywhere. If he goes left, he doesn't go anywhere. And what we're going to be doing is if you go this way, it's going to send you to a new room. And then you can also walk back and it's going to kind of remember this world, which is kind of cool. It's going to take a little bit of work, but not as much as you would think. So without further ado, let's jump right in. What you're going to have is you're going to have a bunch of rooms that are going to act as a grid. Um, based on how big you wor your world is, it's going to be based on how big the grid is. So for an example, for my world, I'm just going to make it, um, let's say I wanted to make it 10 rooms wide and 10 rooms tall. Uh, so you can see there's a little graphic on the screen to show this. I made this in Photoshop. Um, so it's a 10 by 10 grid basically, and the world would be over top of it. So if a player was to look at a map, they would see the whole world, but as they move around, they're actually moving around between the individual rooms. They're just seeing pieces of the world at a time. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to make a few rooms, uh, but you want to name them in a way so you can know where they're placed on the grid. So for an example, I'm going to start from the middle of my room or middle of my world and work out. So I'm going to call this rm underscore uh, 5 by 5. So this is 5th in and 5th down. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to duplicate. I'm just going to do a few rooms for this example. But I'm going to call this rm underscore 4 times 5. So this is going to be the room to the left of the middle. So you can see 4 times 5 there. And we can duplicate that again. Or I'm underscore, I can go six times five. Duplicate. Actually, we should be changing things about these rooms so we know we're moving between them. I'm going to call this RM underscore five times six. So this is going to be one room below the middle. Let's go in here really quick and move this stuff around. And the same with this one. I'll just go one rock for this guy and we'll do one more room so I have a bit of like a, a cross rm underscore five times four so we've got the middle room a room above it to its left to its right and down what we're gonna need to do is every single room is going to create a variable so if we go into room five by five here if you go to settings you have to click on creation code and this is code that is going to run as soon as the as soon as the room appears on the screen so as soon as the player is in the room it's going to run whatever code is in here and what we're going to do is set some variables and they're actually going to be global variables and we're going to do it like this we're going to say global var uh left room and then we're going to say left room is equal to rm underscore four times five is the one to the left. So as you can see, we're going to set the left up, down, and to the right. Oh, whoops. Has that been there the whole time? So what we have here is, yeah, um, we've got to set variables for all four directions uh, for every single room, but because it's going to be different for every room. So we put that in the creation code of the room so that it changes every time the player spawns into it. So let's do this a few more times. Global var right room, whoops. 
right room is equal to rm underscore uh, six times five. Global var, um, we'll say up room. Up room is equal to rm underscore five times four. I guess I should be using like north maybe or something. I don't know. That would probably be better. Uh, global var finally down room. Whoops, I'm bad at hitting that semicolon. And down room is equal to six. Nope, five times six. So what we set here is we've told the game which room is to our left in the world, which room is to our right in the world. Now what we're going to do is let's copy this because we're going to have to do this for every room because it's going to be individual. Now since I haven't created a full square, not every room is going to be able to go in every direction. So all the other rooms are basically only going to have one option. So in this case, this is the room to the left. So we're only going to be able to go back to the right. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, because we just haven't made those rooms yet. If you've made those rooms, you would put in the individual settings for this um, based on your grid. But in this case, left room, we can only go back to the right. And let's do that in here as well. So this is the room to the right. So we can only move to the left. Perfect. Perfect. Love it. This is the room below. This is the down room. So down room, we can only go back up. Awesome. And this is the up room, which means we can only go back down. So what we've done is we've set these variables, set them up all nice. And now the player can use them when we want to do our room transition. So we want to figure out what room we should be going to next. So in the player, OBG player, uh, under, you're going to add an event and you're going to go to other and you're going to add an outside room event. And this is an event that runs whenever the player is outside the borders of the room, whenever they leave the room. And that's what we want, right? When the player goes outside of the room, we want to move them to a new world. So it looks like they didn't move outside of the room almost. And we're going to drag in some code, as we always do. And what we're going to say here is we need to figure out first whether the player, where the player is in the room. Did they go up? Did they go down? Did they go left? Did they go right? So what we're going to say is we're going to do some comments here. And actually, we'll do three, and we'll just say um, room transition. And then we'll do another comment. And we're going to say uh, move, or we'll say, we'll just say left. So if the player is the, uh, to the left, that means that their x is less than zero. So if x is less than zero, then room underscore go to rm or not sorry rm we're going to use the variable left room okay you see that so next we're going to do to the right so in this case our x will be greater than the width of the room so if x is greater than um room underscore width then room underscore go to right room so if we've moved to the right and we're going to go up so if we want to go up we want to see if our y is less than zero because zero is along the top so if y is less than zero then room underscore go to uh up room how did i forget that that's probably the simplest part of this and then we also have to do down so if y is greater than room underscore height then room underscore go to down room so as you can see what we have here is our transitions uh, you know if we move if we go outside the left border move us to the left room if we move outside the right border move us to the right room and it's all about this grid so get familiar with it what your grid will look like for your world we're gonna hit OK and let's run the game and let's see how it worked. It's probably going to take a second here. Okay. 
because every time the player enters a new room, it's going to reset all those variables. It's going to change what the right, left, top, and bottom are based on the new ones you created in the creation code. So this tutorial, as you can tell, is equally complex as it is simple. If you understand the basics of the creation code and stuff, it's going to be quite simple. But otherwise, it might be more complicated. So here we go. This is our player. We're moving around. If I go up, we move to the up room. If I move down, we move to the down room. But as you can see, our player is spawning in the middle of the room. If we go here, our player spawns in the middle. That doesn't look very realistic. So how do we change that? So what we need to do to fix this isn't too complicated, actually. There's two big things we need to do. One, we need to delete the player from every room except for the main one, except for the one that they're starting in, because that's affecting our position. It's spawning a new player in with X and Y coordinates that have been reset. We don't want that. So we're going to delete all of that. And you see in our OBJ player, up here on the left side, we're going to hit persistent. And what that's going to do is that's going to keep relative X and Y coordinates for every room. Now next up in the outside room where we have our room transitions, we have to add one line of code to every if statement here. And that's going to be what's going to position us. So for this one, we're going to say X equals uh, room underscore width, whoops, room underscore width, if I remember this correctly, minus 16. So that's going to place us in the correct position for spawning in on the right side of the room. Because if we leave on the left, we're going to pop up on the right side, correct? So all that's going to do is that's going to change our X to the opposite side of the room. We're going to do the same if we go to the right room. We're going to say X equals 0 plus 16. So that's going to put us on the left side of the room and it's going to put us 16 pixels over just so we're on the screen and we're not off to the side. For up, if we're going up, we're going to say uh, y is equal to room underscore height uh, minus 16. So if we go up, we want to show up on the bottom of the room. And for y here, we're going to say, or for down, I mean, we're going to say y equals uh, 0 plus 16. So if we go down, we want to show up on the top of the room. So all this is going to do is it's going to properly set our x and y coordinates so we show up in that position relative to the room. So let's hit check on all of that and let's run our game and see how it goes. And here it is. Are you ready for this? Let's go up. We show up at the bottom. If we go here, and it's going to put us in the exact same position length and width wise. So as you can see, it's almost like we're navigating a whole world. So from my perspective, or from the perspective of the player, it looks like it's just one thing. However, it really isn't. It really has been split up. So kind of just a cool, it's a cool feature to add to your game. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to be adding a fade effect for when we do this. When we go there, it's going to fade to the next room. Uh, that's optional. Some people like the feeling of having it congruent and having it consistent like this. Alternatively, though, if you want the fade effect, you can watch the, uh, the next episode for that. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next episode. If you enjoyed this, let me know. If you have any trouble with this, any questions, please let me know as well. I'll do my best to answer every question in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Happy devving.